So what has the papers been saying about your buy-to-let property investments? Check out this video as I go through the latest tabloids to find out how their views and opinions may affect your property investments. Okay, so as I said in the intro, we are going to be talking about the tabloids, what they've been saying, and how it might affect your property portfolio. Now, I've had some interesting feedback about my videos. One particular client has said my videos were pretty cheesy. So I have to admit, I have got to make some changes. So what I'm gonna do for you is I'm going to make you a nice pasta dish. And on top of that, I'm gonna grate some cheddar cheese. And then I'm even gonna put on some mozzarella. And I might even sprinkle on some Parmesan to make it that extra bit cheesy. Mmm, delicious. So let's go and see what's been happening in the papers this month to find out how it's going to affect you and the decisions you might want to make in the year 2020. Before we start getting into the detail of what the tabloids have been saying, you are going to see divided opinions. You are going to have one side on your shoulder saying you should be buying into property investments. Okay, great. And then all of a sudden you're going to have another opinion that says you should not be investing in property. You need to make the call. Should you? Shouldn't you? Remember this phrase though from Warren Buffett, one of the most amazing investors that you are likely to ever hear about, who says that when people grow fearful, you should grow your investments. And when people grow greedy, you should grow fearful. Well, if my understanding is correct, most people are growing fearful right now. Should that be suggesting to us as property investors, we need to be greedy? Well, again, you need to make sure you do your due diligence and research to make the best investment strategies for yourself. As I said, let's get into the details of what the tabloids are now saying. So, the, as I mentioned before, there is divided opinion about property investing. And as you'll see in this particular article from the Property Investor Today, which we have written for before, uh, that suggests the top buy-to-let property hotspots for 2020, which is hopefully a positive article if it's writing in this nature. And what they've done is identified Bootle which is a great place, by the way, uh, of my famous football club that you should go and represent leaving behind Manchester United, as an example. Um, but just saying away from football now, we are talking about property investing. Bootle could be an opportunity according to the property investor. Now, there are other articles as well that talk about different areas. Now, interesting enough, with this link, which is on in the comments box below, They've also provided you with an average house price link as well. Click on that and eventually this will appear on your screen to the property market forecast and it will give you area by area and the types of properties you can invest into as well. So make sure you do have a look at that link and indeed that article. Interestingly enough, the uh, same provider of this article, Property Investor Today, have written another article talking about a very similar positive outlook, uh, saying that where is the highest tenant demand for buy-to-let homes? And very nicely, what they've done is provided us with a list of demand areas for rental properties. Uh, I've noticed as well, my area, Nottingham, has got a 33% uh, increase in terms of the tenant demand. So I would suspect this would be a good area uh, or good section of an article to research to find out if your local area is the right area or indeed if you should now think about investing in other areas. Um, again, very similar to that, Simply Business, not a, a publisher I have talked about many times in the past, but it too talks about best buy-to-let areas in the year 
220 or 2020, 220, wow, 220 AD, we're going back a long time. Uh, but 2020 is the year that they're talking about. And again, very, very nicely, they have done their own research uh, to say which is the best areas. And interestingly enough, they too have identified Liverpool as being one of the best areas. And Nottingham doesn't appear on this list, but Leicester does. So an interesting, again, different insights. If you are looking at different uh, areas for you to make some investments, do look at these articles. All of the links, by the way, guys, are published in the description box below. But what's nice and pleasing about this is that there is a positive outlook for property investments in the UK. Um, and I've got to also suggest that it, this would be a, a good article for you to read the Financial Times, don't you know? And in this article, which is entitled, Why I Changed My Mind About buy to let Now, it was an interesting story about all the reasons why buy to let property investments, not such a good idea with the tax changes, legislation changes. But then you scroll down pretty far down the article, and what they talk about is holiday lets. Now, isn't it an interesting insight that a lot of people are now looking at holiday lets and serviced accommodation, which we're going to be producing a number of videos about as well in the future. Um, this talks about the types of areas that you might want to invest in terms of holiday lets, but the added benefit of having your own accommodation and a holiday let that you can frequent and stay in for free. So it's not just an investment, but it's also reducing your holiday costs as well. So there's a positive and another positive of investing in holiday lets. And interesting enough, um, there's another publisher uh, which talks about the Telegraph. Again, how to build a property buy to let portfolio and where to start with holiday lets that come with their tax perks. And they bring up the, the, the criteria that you must meet, as did the Financial Times, uh, talking about what your holiday let must be let out for, what the availability must be, can you let it out for multiple occasions to the same tenant, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but they, again, give you different uh, analysis. Where is it easiest to get the best yields? And interesting, if I zoom up, Isle of Wight with a great return on investment or great yields. So you need to make again your mind in terms of where you might go, but they do give you a good, good insight to the different areas that you might want to be buying your holiday let. Let's be fair guys, there is a divide between the North and the South. By the way, this is nothing about demographics or political views. This is purely about weather. If you go to the northern parts of the country, Manchester, Liverpool, it's less sunny, more rainy. But as soon as you go to Dorset and areas that are closer, I would say, to the Channel Islands, then you are going to have better weather, which means that there are going to be more tourists that go to that area. And indeed, it's closer to London. So why not start to, start to think about, at least, investing in holiday lets? And once you've done that, why not tell me where it is and give me a free night's day so I can view your property and tell you all the great things about your property. Let me know, send me a comment in this video of where your property is and when I can stay for free. Thank you. Um, moving on from that, we've also got the other side, so the devil's side. Should you sell your property portfolio? Yes. Well, we have to think about if you do decide to sell your property portfolio, you will have capital gains tax. And there is a video that should be appearing above my head about CGT. In fact, there's a playlist that you should be watching about CGT because there's so many issues you need to think about. But they, again, go through the insights of the tax changes and how it's going to affect and the survey of 800 landlords, so not many landlords to be fair, but Simply Business found that a quarter of investors are looking to sell at least one property, if not more. And there's obviously a, an insight now to CGT. There are some capital gains tax changes coming your way from April 2020. So you need to be on top of that to make sure you, if you are looking to sell your property portfolio, or indeed just one property, that you time it just right. 
So make sure you do that. Uh, if you are looking to sell your property portfolio, look at the capital gains tax issues. Um, we're going to go over to about mortgages now. So back to um, this is back to basics. And this is an article uh, from mortgagesolutions.co.uk. And there are specialists in, in providing mortgages. The one thing they, they talk about, which is interesting to talk about mortgages and the insights from a mortgage broker, is that they can see the professionalization now of landlords. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of landlords, because of tax changes, are thinking about using a limited company. Never mind using different property strategies, such as holiday lets. But they pretty much will focus on that in terms of this article. Uh, they talk about HMOs, interestingly enough, in this article, as well as looking at uh, limited companies, because there are greater margins in HMOs. From my personal perspective, People that go from single lets may then promote their scheme, their strategy to HMOs. And those that have got a bit more, well, a lot more time, let's be fair, on holiday lets or systemizing in that business will then go beyond the HMO markets and go to holiday lets because that is where the money can be made even more than HMOs by far uh, if you know what you are doing. So it is now time for you to think about your property strategy but if you're doing that, make sure you get the right tax plan in situ as well. Moving on, we've got Letting Agent today, and they have written another buy to let gloom, which kind of compounds what being said over a quarter of landlords may sell in 2020. Again, citing that whole reason of the, uh, the, the impact of Section 24 mortgage interest relief cap, legislation changes that's really a targeting and focusing on the tenants not the landlord and it's just, again 27 percent of landlords expect to see a further decrease now again this is the whole area of thinking about capital gains tax as they said down here it is so so important i will suspect but when the changes for cgt come into force and convincing solicitors how to calculate your CGT for you, there are going to be such huge overpayments. And we are very aware of this, and we're going to bring out a new service that says, have you paid overpaid CGT? And we'll produce this on a no win, no fee. So if we do not get any tax back on your capital gains tax payments, then we won't charge you for our services. So we'll do all the due diligence, we'll research to see how much CGT you paid, see how much we can recalculate back on your tax return, and then claim it back for you. You don't need to do a thing, you only pay for the savings we make, and we're looking to make about 20% of those uh, savings. So then there's another article, Yahoo, who talks about, uh, this is uh, interesting enough, uh, this is uh, Motley Fool, that's right. Uh, so Motley Fool, uh, Harvey Jones, is a constant um, writer about buy-to-let property investing. Very much a, a, not cynicism, I don't want to use that word, but they, they're, they're looking at the buy-to-let saying it's not a very good market to be in. And that, to be fair, they make some very, very good points. And I think it's, for me personally, I think it's having a portfolio of investments, not just property. And they do talk about shares are so much easier, you can get a better index growth in those investments. We must remember that shares do have a risk associated with it, just as portfolio does. So when there's a risk against one, at some point there's going to be a risk against another. So you do need to do your due diligence, but I do think having a portfolio of investments that's not just property related does make a lot of sense. So feel free to read that article, which is entitled, Why Buy to Select Property Could Be the Biggest Investment Misstep You Can Make in 2020. And then we go into a further bit more about mortgages. So we talk about Paragon now. Uh, so this is the FT advisor, Paragon cuts rates on buy to let range. And they talk about the, the different types of range of products. Now for my money, we are going to see a greater deal of competition in the buy to let market. How long that will last for, I don't know. But there are so many things going off in the buy to let space. We are losing landlords because the amateur ones are disappearing. We're seeing a lot of people selling up. We know this. We're seeing a lot of investors that are staying in this market 
are thinking about changing strategies. So holiday lets, HMOs, which require a different product. And then we're going to limited companies. So all of a sudden, the buy to let mortgage industry must be turning, turning, turning over new product range to entice people to go shop with them. But the rates are absolutely fantastic. They do talk about a variable rate and a fixed rate as low as 2.75%. And for my money, mortgage interest rates will only go up one way. The only way is up. And that's where you have a problem because the fixed rate is ideal. It fixes those rates. You will not go through a variable rate and lose a lot of margin. By the way, apologies for the singing. Uh, let's move on to uh, the property wire. And again, they've got their gatehouse cuts buy to let rates, another provider that talks about significant reduction in their fixed rate terms. So if you're not shopping around for your buy to let mortgages, or if you're coming up to uh, a renewal period, or you've got a break clause that you can then now enact, it may be the best opportunity for you to reduce your mortgage interest rates. And let's not forget, if you do it, you might make more profit from your portfolio. Um, we've now got one as well. This is again, letting agent today, just sticking on with mortgages right now, complex buy to let investments set to become more popular next year. And again, they're citing Paragon, uh, Maury Hulm uh, from Paragon is saying that there is going to be such changes coming into the mortgage portfolio through the incorporation of property portfolios into LLPs, into limited companies, and a diversify, uh, diversification of the investments that people might make. And is, if it hasn't been coming on board, uh, finally, we get to talk about buy association. Thank you ever so much again for writing some brilliant articles. Um, and here they talk about revamped buy to let range for professional landlords. Please note the word professional. What they mean by that is people that are staying in the market looking to make money in the future. They're not talking about the accidental landlords here. And what they're talking about is, again, is mortgages and the types of properties that you can go into. Lower rates, zero product fees, free valuations and cash back. We are going to go back, I believe, to the early kind of 80s and 90s where mortgages are falling over themselves to get your business. So they're going to give you lots more incentives. Remember ages ago when they said, we want 145% of the valuation of in terms of your rental yield? Well, how long will that last? Well, time will tell. But ultimately, we are going to see a change. Now, by association, I have to say, you are writing about tax. Now, please stop it because that's our SEO. You're stealing it. Uh, but on a serious note, uh, they do talk about, is it worth setting up a limited company? And a very nice article indeed it is talking about uh, buy to let. I will have a uh, video appearing above my head, which takes you to one of our videos about section 24 and should you be using a limited company because of it. So watch that video, but I did do read this article by Buy Association about the tax implication of buy to lets and is it worth setting up the limited company. Again, we talk about section 24 here and some of the corporation tax rates that you'll be saving. So 17% mortgage interest relief, uh, section 24 does not affect you in a limited company. Capital gains tax will be subject to 17%, but you do lose your CGT annual allowances. To be fair, I don't think that's too much of a hardship nowadays, given the tax rates in a limited company anyway. So there is quite a few guides that they've written, brilliant articles, I have to say and uh, hopefully you'll be uh, happy to read that article. Um, that brings me to a close for January. So thank you ever so much for listening in to me today about property, buy to let news and how it might affect you in the future. I shall see you in February. And remember, cheese on cheese on cheese. Cheerio.